Greetings and peace this morning. This beautiful day of God's creation. Welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church. We hope you feel the love and warmth of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit this morning as we worship. Let us begin. We are celebrating, <clears throat> excuse me, the anniversary of baptism this morning. Would those families please come forward and meet me at the baptismal font? We have none this morning. Okay. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. (laughs) 
When God claimed these beloved young people in holy baptism, we made sacred promises. Parents promised to faithfully bring Sponsors in this congregation promised Today we keep and renew our promises. that you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way. Receive the sign of the cross on your eyes. That you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips. That God may dwell within you by faith. Receive the sign of the cross on your heart, that you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ in serving, receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders, that God's mercy may be known in your works, receive the sign of the cross on your hand. that you may follow in the way of Christ, receive the sign of the cross on your feet. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, O Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last thing. When you were baptized, an assisting minister handed your parents a candle. Maybe the candle that you are holding right now. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You are part of God's family and workers with us.
Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading is from Isaiah. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for you. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. 
I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called my, by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedar of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees ripe and strut strips the forest bare, and in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. The second lesson is from Acts. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel, according to Luke, the third chapter. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to have the children come up. (coughs) 
Good morning. How are you guys this morning? Did you slip and slide on the way here? Good. That's a good thing. How many of you over the holidays had time to spend with some cousins? Anyone play with their cousins over? Good. Over the holidays, got together with family? Well, the story we just, uh, that I just read, that you just heard, is about Jesus and his cousin. John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. And these two guys, as I'm going to talk about in just a little bit, uh, their lives intersected all the time. We don't know if they ever partied together, okay? If they played together when they were kids, none of that's recorded. But we do know that they were cousins. And the most important meeting that they ever had is told in this, this story that I just read. John baptized Jesus, okay? And what he did, it was in the River Jordan. So he was, they were in a river, okay? And John took Jesus, and he dumped all of his body into the river, okay? Just all, he just dumped his whole body right into the river, all right? Well, when we were baptized, we do it a little bit differently today. We don't usually dump people, okay? We go to a baptismal font. So I'd like to take a field trip this morning. Want to take a field trip with me? Our baptismal font's set up. Let's go over there. Okay, come on, gather around. It's okay. This is our baptismal font, okay? And we pour water in there. You may have seen me do this earlier. I'll pour a little bit more in. Okay, and instead of being grown men like John and Jesus were at the time of this story, we usually baptize babies. But anybody can be baptized, okay, at any age. It's never too late to be baptized. But when you were a baby, you were held in the pastor's arms like this, and he put water on your forehead, okay? You want to stick your hand in the water? You can. Go ahead and it's just water, okay? If you want to stick your hand in there, go right ahead. <laughs> it's just water. But as soon as it goes on your head, it becomes far more than water because Jesus and the Holy Spirit is with you then, okay? And you have this, we can't see it as we look at each other, but we all have a mark on our forehead. And Jesus knows that we belong to him. Isn't that, isn't that great? Okay. So that's how our baptism works. It would be pretty tough to get a whole person in that bowl, wouldn't it? All right. Let's pray. Jesus, you gave us water and the Holy Spirit and fire. Be with us all our days, letting us always know that we are marked as yours forever and ever. Amen. All right. Thank you. May my words be in harmony with the universe, contribute to its justice, enhance its beauty, and help bring peace to all the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I baptize you with water. That's what John said. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and with fire. Jesus and John the baptizer are deliberately paired together in all four Gospels. 
John's real name was Yohanan ben Zechariah. That is, John, the son of Zechariah. We know him better as John the Baptizer. Often John the Baptist. I try to avoid that one. It sounds denominational to me. But he was a baptizer. And of course, Yeshua, or Jesus. They're deliberately paired in all four Gospels. The reading we just heard from Luke also cons uh, has that great, uh, that great line earlier in the Gospel that when Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, John jumped for joy in utero. He jumped for joy inside of his mother. Similar story is told in Matthew, almost identical in Matthew, except there's, there's no greeting there. In Mark, the entire gospel begins with John the Baptist. And in the gospel of John, we hear the question to John, are you Elijah? And this question was asked because the Jews knew that the Messiah was coming. And they truly believed that he would be preceded by Elijah, the great prophet. And that's why they kept asking John, are you Elijah? And John kept saying, nope, not me. And then he has that great line at his exit, John's exit, where he says, I must decrease so that Jesus may increase. John was, the, uh, John was the archetypal, the archetypal ascetic. We always see him this way, an unkempt beard and hair, famously clothed in camel hair, a leather belt as a cincture. He ate honey and wild locusts. Has anyone eaten locusts? I've never eaten locusts. Uh, it doesn't sound real good. Uh, but he was alone. He was a hermit for all intents and purposes. And his message was one of repentance. And remember, repentance, to repent means to turn around. To turn around and face God in this case. And always with inner preparation. He's preparing the way. That's what he said. He quotes Isaiah and says he prepares the way. I just like these two icons. These are Eastern Orthodox icons, and they really show the difference between the two cousins. Look at John, wild man, and Jesus. Still long hair, but looking much, much calmer. Superficially, they do look alike, but they're not. Jesus did go to the wilderness. Again, in all four Gospels, it's recorded that after his baptism, he went into the wilderness, but only for 40 days, and there was tempted by Satan. But when he came back, he did not deny earthly food. He did not eat locusts. He feasted on the word of God. And he also taught, and he healed, and he laughed. I'm just convinced that Jesus laughed a lot. And he danced, and he dined, and he drank, all with people. He was always surrounded by people. Certainly not an ascetic. Certainly not. A hermit. And so this pairing is not showing their likeness. This pairing of the two cousins is showing their difference and showing that a new era has begun in Jesus Christ. And there's a difference in baptisms too. In Jewish custom, in those days, it was called a mikvah. 
a mikvah. And the word means gathering together. A mikvah gathers things together. And what we've gathered together this time is water. It could be a pond. It could be a river like the Jordan. But it's a gathering together. And the water must be living water. Living water. We hear that word or phrase in scripture all the time. Living water. Think this. Imagine a bubbling stream as it goes by. It looks very much alive, doesn't it? This bubbling. That ensured to the Jewish people that the water was not stagnant. You would not go to the Dead Sea to perform a mikvah. It had to be living water. Three things about Jewish baptism that John was doing. It was a purification rite. And it would be done more than once. We baptize once. But this could be done more than once. For example, if you touched a dead body, you would be unclean. And you'd have to be purified. And so you'd have a mikvah again. And three things are involved here. One of them, it did not it did not ensure salvation. That's very important. It was a purification rite. It made you pure so that you could go to the temple. Second thing about it, you were completely immersed. In Hebrew, it's called teleha. Completely immersed, just as I told the, the, the children. Jesus was completely immersed, as we see happening in the picture there. You're completely immersed in the water. And the third thing, it guaranteed you a new life, a new life of blessing, and, this is the important part, service to the community. Service to the community. Those three things were involved in mikvah. Christian baptism... There's our, uh, there's our uh, juxtaposition of the two cultures again. We see the bubbling river, the, the stream running by. And then, and I chose a, a, a contemporary baptismal font, since that's what we have, but a baptismal font, as we use today. I'm not going to talk about immersion or non-immersion. That's a topic for another time. <clears throat> but in Christian baptism, we still use living water. We can be guaranteed that our water is pure, that stagnant water does not come out of our tap. I hope, though I think of a community right now that that's happened. Uh, but our water is pure. So we don't really concern ourselves with the living water aspect. However, in other traditions, especially the Eastern Orthodox tradition, the water is poured into the baptismal font, as I just poured for the, for the children, and the priest then takes a huge breath and blows his breath over the water in the sign of the cross. And what does the water do? He's really blowing hard, too. The water bubbles. You know, the little waves are in there. Okay? Beautiful image of breath. Our Greek word is pneuma, which means breath or wind or spirit. All three of them. And so that's what this Orthodox priest is doing is blowing the spirit across there. And then our babies, usually we baptize babies, are then moistened. They're not immersed. We moisten them, pouring water over their head, making the sign of the cross on their head. 
And for us, three things are involved. Number one, this is an initiation rite. It initiates us into God's kingdom, into the church. Remember, our baptismal font is usually right there as we walk in. And on this beautiful journey, this pilgrimage that we make in life, from there to here, begins with baptism. All right? So it's an initiation rite. It also contains eschatological status. Big word, it's talking about the end of time. The end of the age, as Jesus said. Eschatological. We will be there at the end of time with our Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll know us. Also, and here's the big difference, it changes the profane into the holy. We are made holy by this rite in this way. It's in the Great Commission. That's Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore, this is Jesus, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Most important, in the name of the Blessed Trinity, it's the key element of baptism for Christians. All Christians agree on this. Can you believe it? We actually agree on something. Okay? All denominations, all sects, whatever, believe we are baptized in the name of the Trinity. There are other great images in this reading. It says that Jesus is winnowing. He's on a threshing floor and the wheat and the chaff will be divided. The threshing floor is a very important image in Jewish culture. There's two pictures of it there. The top one, you see the circle? It's a circle. And the animals would walk around in there, and that's how the threshing was done. I am not a farm boy. I'm probably going to say something stupid about winning and threshing. <laughs> All right. But the threshing floor was not only a place of work, when the grain was brought in. It was also a place where uh, the men of the society got together and they would discuss politics and religion. So it, it was a meeting place. But most important, when we hear the word threshing floor, we always have to remember that this also is an eschatological thing. Okay, it's the end of time. Well, it's certainly the end, the end of time for the grain. Okay, and by extension, all of us. It also said that Jesus was praying. That seems kind of a duh. But again, in Jewish culture, it shows great piety that he was praying. And then the heavens were opened. The Greek word is oranos. That means sky. But by extension again, the heavens. Okay, the heavens were opened, it said. So this visual, the heavens opening. And then there was a voice from heaven. And so we have this divine revelation. Two ways. We can see it, we can hear it. A divine revelation. And our word here is theophany. Theophany. We just celebrated Epiphany. Epiphany is a showing forth. Jesus was manifested to the Gentiles in the form of three sages from the East. Here we have Theophany. God is revealed in the opening of the heavens and in the voice. And that voice says, You are my beloved. 
Isaiah 42.1 is where that comes from. You are my beloved. And again, the Greek word is agapitos. Agape. We've all heard the word agape. And agape means that as Christians, we are united with God and each other. There's the community again. In the bonds of holy love. Agape. Some interesting images that are all within that reading. Our word, baptism, baptizo, means to whelm. That is, to be covered with a fluid. A fluid. I hope it's just water. That's also where we get our word overwhelm, to be overwhelmed. And for us, this is a very qualified and special sense that we are whelmed. Baptizo. But it's also to stain. And here we actually go to the root of this Greek word, bato, which means to stain. And what would happen is that you would take cloth and you would dip it, bato, into bleach and then dip it, bato, into dye. And that's how the clothing was dyed. So it's dipped in bleach and it's dipped in a dye. So it's cleaned and then it's dyed. And that's exactly what happens in our baptism. When that water is put on our head and the sign of the cross is made on our forehead with water, we are cleaned and we are stained. Annette didn't like my use of the word stain. She says that sounds negative. And the connotation probably is a little bit. So think died if you'd like. Or simply marked. We are marked, and we become a new person. And as I just told the kids, you know, that mark is there. We look at each other. We can't see it, but Jesus sees it, and he knows that we're marked as his. Revelation 19.13 says, He, speaking of Jesus, He is clad in a robe dipped Bapto, dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is Word of God. So we're stained, we're dyed, we're marked as a member of God's kingdom. What happened to Jesus in today's reading happened to us. So, I have an admission to make to you. I cry at baptisms. Oh, I don't mean sob, but I always get teary-eyed at baptisms. Many people cry at weddings. I've never cried at a wedding. Most people cry at a funeral. I've done that. But I always cry at baptisms because of everything that I just shared with you. That is so powerful to be baptized. I always try to leave you with something to do or at least to contemplate. Of course, it would seem obvious today I want everybody to run out and get baptized. Well, we've already done that. And if you have not and would like to be baptized into our Lord, is painless and powerful. So please see any of us if you would like to. So I guess all I can call you to do today is the next time there's a baptism, cry with me. Cry with me in the power that this baptism has. 
Cry with me when you hear this opening prayer from our worship book. Calling forth the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word of God, delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Amen. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Pour out your spirit upon us and enliven us for mission. Draw us together in love that we may be one. Lead us in the way of your beloved Son. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth, sustain oceans and seas, rivers and lakes, marshes and wetlands. Watch over dormant plants and hibernating animals as they rest in your care. Renew your creation and protect all creatures from harm. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, inspire leaders to work for the common good. Grant courage to those who put themselves at risk to protect others. Turn us away from violence and teach us to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, protect children and vulnerable adults who depend on others to provide for their daily care. Uphold those who struggle with depression. Console the grieving and heal the sick, especially Ellen Lassant, Denny Hobein, Nathan Carlson. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, 
Bless the newly baptized. Renew your children in the covenant of baptism. Empower us by your loving spirit to serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Hold us safe in your arms of mercy and bring us with them into your promise of life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. 
Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right and good. And we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us, and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things, and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven, to a virgin's womb, he there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people, and he stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who who trust you. He is the one who, handed over to death, he freely accepted, in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. Taking bread and giving thanks to you, he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks, that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon the gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through our, your Son, Jesus Christ through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. They will come from the north and the south, the east and the west, and gather at this table. Please join them. All is ready.
with love, with love and spiritual care for God's people, and by the Lord's invitation, we welcome all baptized Christians to commune at Messiah. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Are there any announcements this morning? Then receive this benediction. The God of glory dwell in you richly. Name you beloved and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always.